Jane Barlow was an Irish writer and poet. She was born in 1856 in Dollyman Clontarf, the daughter of Reverend James William Barlow, Vice Provost of Trinity College Dublin, and Mary Louisa Barlow. She was a noted pianist who travelled through Italy, France, Greece and Turkey. She was one of the first women awarded a degree by the University of Dublin, receiving a Doctor of Letters. She was a member of the Society for Psychical Research for 25 years, and was a friend of Catherine Tynan and Sarah Purser. After the death of her father, she stopped living according to Tynan, and only survived him by four years, dying in 1917 in Bray. Her 1892 Irish Idols was very popular and went through nine editions, but her work was dropped from anthologies by the likes of Yeats and George Birmingham. We shall review her 1908 A Strange Land, published as by Felix Ryark. The story begins with Dennis Mayne finding himself alone in the world at age 30, following the death of his mother. Always having been a talented fiddler, even obtaining a study of at great expense despite not being rich, his mother had left him behind a composition, The Dream in Sleep. Not knowing his mother had any talent for this, he is even more bewildered by the odd perception of the music by those around him. Being forced to leave his house, he wanders about and winds up in the jungles of Cambodia. Stealing a canoe, he floats on the river before he comes to a strange massive wall built around a massive stretch of land. Falling asleep, he finds himself beyond the wall and wanders through a country without any animals where all the flowers are different and oddly utilitarian, leaving behind no refuse. Wandering through miles of deserted land, he pulls out his violin to play, and in doing so he causes a great commotion, as several young girls appear and run away from him in terror, and another shows up looking for the music that had just passed. Being taken in by several people, he is told that playing music of any sort is illegal in this country. The girl from before, El Med, is one of the same house, along with her brother, the scientist Ninmarch. They decide to keep the music incident to themselves and let him learn more of their country while staying with them. Dennis discovers that in this land, people do not age beyond adulthood. Sickness is unknown, and no injury is known that can cause anyone true harm. But there is one thing, the reason for the universal fear and ban on music. The only way these people can die is if a strange mist descends upon them while exuding wondrous music. Dennis witnesses this himself as several members of a family are took up this way in front of his eyes. As he stays with the Ninmarch family, Ninmarch hurts his eyes during an accident, but Dennis learns all expect him to fully regain his sight in a few months as a matter of course as with any injury. When Destrin, Elmet's friend and beloved, learns from Dennis that in his home a blind man would be blind forever, this sends Destrin into a fit of depression. As for Elmet, she waits for Dennis to reveal all about the outside world, deluded into thinking he must be even better than her home. Dennis does not want to tell her, especially given his rising passion for the girl. After witnessing the Brotherhood of Fear, an institution devoted to perpetual noise and ugliness in an attempt to ward off the mist, he teaches Destran to play the violin in secret. However, Destran uses this knowledge to open a barrier and go out into the outside world, as Dennis's mother's melody is the key. Reasoning he must have misunderstood everything Dennis told him about it. Waiting for Lindmarsh to recover his sight, Dennis dreads having to give his host and his family the news of the outside world, knowing it could only bring them sorrow. He tries to kill himself to avoid doing so, but finds he cannot. So he takes Elmer to the wall on an excursion, where she meets a hag at Destrin who comes to embrace her before the music makes them both die all of a sudden. Dennis runs away from the country to avoid telling Linmarch what he promised, which the entire book had been building up to, which is a bit annoying. Also, we don't see much of the country at all as Dennis only stays with a few people and doesn't go very far. At least there is incident and sorrow on his part to avoid the boring perfection of the common utopia. 